Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Cynthia Tulin Wilson on my show, Author to Author. And today I'm here with Dr. Christina Olson, and she has written an interesting book called God's Memoir. How are you today? Hi, uh, Dr. Tulin Wilson. Fine, thank you. How, how are you doing? I'm, I'm well. <laughs> I can't complain. Good deal. So. Yeah, pretty soon summer will be here in Vermont and I won't have to turn the temperature on every, you know, the, the thermostat on every morning. So I'm doing well. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's cool up there. I'm in Philly and uh, it's it's a warm day here in Philly. Yeah, yeah, it's it's cool. You still need at least a jean jacket if you're going out. Mm. Okay. So, yeah, that's why I want to move to Florida. But anyway, <laughs> so uh, would you like to start us with a prayer? Sure. Uh, let's begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to gather together here uh, on, on media to talk about you and uh, a book about you and a book in which we try to connect with you um, in, a, in an intimate and meaningful way. Um, please guide our discussion today and uh, welcome our, our listening guests and our watching guests that they may be part of this discussion. We're happy to be here, and we invite you into our midst, Lord. We know you're already here, but we are grateful for that, and we notice that, and uh, please be with us throughout this discussion. Uh, we ask this uh, in Jesus' name, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, the minute I saw the title of the book, God's Memoir, I thought that must be pretty interesting. <laughs> You know, I can just picture God saying, okay, well, I guess today I'll do this. You know, I'll I'll create something new. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so it's an interesting title. How did you come up with it? Well, yes, what you said is exactly right. How might God think about how he creates things, um, his, you know, mm -hmm. eternal um, uh, co-persons co, uh, of the Trinity uh, who've been with him? obviously before and outside of time, how would they communicate within himself, themselves? Mm -hmm. And I came up with a title just because I was wrestling with my own memoir, which I had rewritten I don't know how many times. Mm -hmm. And I kept uh, I kept wanting it to be, you know, a little bit positive and uplifting, and uh, it kept getting shorter and shorter as a result. And I'm <laughs> complaining to God, how can I finish this? And, and uh so I kept uh, trying to finish that memoir, kept rewriting it and everything, and I finally wondered, well, God, how would you, um, you know, how would you write a memoir? I mean, it's because my 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 particular memoir became, as you know, because we talked about it, my Catholic conversion, and it was about, it was more about my faith journey, stories of my faith journey, not really an entire memoir prophet, just uh, just stories about how I came to um, to from from the Lutheran church, basically, through a series of kind of winding roads, visiting Catholic monasteries and so on, ultimately to mm -hmm. study theology and earning a PhD in that and um, Catholic, at Catholic U. And um, so I, I had wrestled with that and wrestled with that. And so I was already in that memoir effort, you know, thinking a lot about God and wondering, sort of immersed in how he had been leading me. And so we were having lots of conversations about uh, life and the history of my life and how he'd worked in my life. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So I then uh, just kind of turned my attention to him and said, how did you write your memoir? And sort of felt like I was asking him permission if I could, you know, tr try writing how he might feel. And we, we mm -hmm. I feel like we worked on that together, you know, because just it was a time of, uh, of, of, you know, a lot of prayer for me. And so it was fun. Um, and that's how the title came to be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's odd that you started out when you were writing yours uh, to making it shorter because of the positive things. So I assume, like me, you had mostly negative things. <laughs> I had I had a tough upbringing, and uh, then uh, you know my parents died when I was young. Oh. Uh, my older sisters uh, went their went their separate ways, which is appropriate for their time of life. Uh, one in one in college, and one. Um, was married and um so i was feeling you know i was left pretty much on my own to send for myself quite a bit yeah and, uh, yes mm -hmm. there, were, there were twists and turns and uh you know one thing that stayed pretty constant though was staying in school yeah uh, my father had 
had said basically I recall I recall one line from him which I I think I actually heard but I've said it in my mind so much that I sometimes wonder if I just kept repeating it to myself but he must have said this I mean I was uh 14 when he passed away and 12 when my mother passed away um but he said uh just get the piece of paper kid you know he was a civil engineer and what Mm -hmm. what meant by that was a bachelor's degree well Mm -hmm. I like learning so I just stayed in school but um Mm -hmm. So that was one constant, but you know, yes, that was, it was a difficult life, but uh, with that, that constant. And also as a child, I had gone to a Lutheran church with neighbors mm-hmm. uh, occasionally gone to church, but um, my father not, so not at all. And mm-hmm. um, so I felt like I had accepted Jesus in my heart and mm-hmm. he had been with me sometimes, sometimes more obviously, often less obviously so to me, he knew he was there, but I, I didn't, yeah. you know, and yeah. so, yes, it was not an easy time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my uh, my memoir is, uh, I mean, people have actually called it words like ghastly. Oh. <laughs> I had I had a terrible upbringing. I think, mm-hmm. you know, so, um, <laughs> I mean, it's like people read my stuff and they get depressed and I don't think they'll read anything else I ever write. Uh-huh. <laughs> Well, it, I turned out all right. That's what matters. <laughs> oh, yes. And to be able to write about that, that must be freeing, you know. And uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm hoping it'll do some good because um, <clears throat> the whole thing came out of, I think I had told you my mother tried to abort me uh, mm-hmm. chemically in 1949. So that's that's how I just started the whole story. And I just followed through on it. And um I thought, you know, maybe this will save somebody, you know, mm-hmm. because somebody will read how awful this is. And it's like, no, but, uh, yeah. So my, my memoir is known as the ghastly one. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, well, uh, that, that's too bad. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's better than that. purpose, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's hard to write about one's life. I mean, it's really, there are certain selective memories that we have and mm-hmm. I don't know when I di- dive into my own memories, you know, there's certain, certain things that come up, other things that I haven't maybe thought about in years. Mm-hmm. So it, in a way it's a good, um, a good journey into the past. And, but with God's memoir, it's, it was interesting to think about how he might write a memoir. And it's, it is my imaginative interpretation of, of how God might write a memoir. So one mm-hmm. of the first things I write about is how God remembers the past and the future, everything in the past and everything in the future. And then he pauses and says, well, I, I don't suppose you can exactly remember the future, but that's what I do, you know. And, <laughs> and I so love the, it. <laughs> the book has that kind of tone to it. It's just kind of fun. Um, oh, that's great. <laughs> I start out by imagining what it mu- must have been like for God to think about what to use for dirt. You know, you've you've heard that phrase that someone's older than dirt. Well, he really is. And, you know, what <laughs> must that have been like? And uh, so he thinks about, um, you know, AstroTurf and those little rubber pebbles they use for children's playgrounds. And then yeah, yeah. <laughs> goes into deci- re- revealing how he decided to use the wonderful hummus for dirt and everything. <laughs> and But basically, I go through Bible, well-known Bible stories, the story of creation, uh, the story of, of the fall. And um, I actually... These are stories that I go over and over in my mind quite a bit anyway, and I do try to stay in the word, you know, usually listening to it on a podcast. Um, uh, I always learn something when I listen to the Bible or read the Bible. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and um, so these stories were in the forefront of my mind, and I just um, wrote wrote about the the stories. I thought, what better what better content could there be than God thinking about what was in the Bible? Yeah. And, Adam and Eve, the story of Joseph and his brothers, you know, Joseph going down mm-hmm. to Egypt and then the story of Judah and Benjamin and Joseph reuniting with his brothers. And mm-hmm. um, I, I'm, I'm into the other the other stories, but God talking about how, um, you know, he didn't really want the Israelites to have a king. He, mm-hmm. he But then Samuel anoint, anointed Saul as the first king, but God wasn't really into that idea. You know, he didn't want to to do that, how he might imagine that and the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. So it's, uh, that's sort of the structure of the book. And then in the, near the end of the book, um, I just let myself talk about things like architecture, music, and art. 
and how, how God inspires artists and, and um, you know, what about church architecture and worship of God and music in the service of worship, mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, <clears throat> I've interviewed a lot of people, actually about 250 at this point. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, I love it. I do. Mm -hmm. I actually enjoy the show. Um, I've never heard of such a creative book. That's wow. Thank yeah. You so much. Yeah, it's true. You can use that as a quotation. This woman who gives interviews every night said. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's like I it's it, you know, it amazes me that never no one ever thought of doing that. It's such a good idea. But it's like that is really creative. Well, thank you very much. And it's a little bit daunting in a way because how dare I, you know, to enter no. the mind of God. So, but it was it's that 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 fairly didn't last too long because I just really just found it really enjoyable to write like that. But um, uh, the um, in a way it sort of sort of write, writes itself in a way because uh, the content is so mm -hmm. closely united to what God has already inspired authors mm -hmm. to write. And what I wanted to say was that I wrote sort of from from my knowledge of the stories, but then I went back and and put in all the scripture references. Mm -hmm. uh, and to be sure, I hadn't, you know, mixed mixed something up or misstated something. Right, right. In fact, I did make some edits based on the, you know, reading reading the actual scripture, and making sure that it was united with um, correct doctrine and everything. So, yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I I think God will be very happy, or is very happy. He's probably up there saying, "Boy, that was a good idea." <laughs> <laughs> really glad she did that. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, nice. And one of the things I, I looked at it again, just um, it, in anticipation of this of this interview. Here's a picture of the book, God's Memoir. Mm -hmm. Many thanks to our friend and colleague uh, Dr. Sebastian Mahfoud and Onroot Books and Media for for publishing this short work and um, mm -hmm. a couple of many of your works as well. Um, mm -hmm. to, to him. And um, so it's. Um, I kind of forgot what I was going to say. Honestly, I like that we were, we were working together on this cover. I like, uh, I like the cover too. Yeah, that, that's a good cover. Yeah, I think where I was going was that it's the the idea of entering into the divinity of God and being welcomed into His divinity mm -hmm. is, you know, mm -hmm. part of why Jesus became human was so that we could we could uh, we now have the second person in the Most Holy Trinity, also fully human and mm -hmm. fully God. And then mm -hmm. opens up human, humanity itself, human nature, to be united with the divine nature. Mm -hmm. and so by, the, I think it's Second Peter where we're invited into the divine nature, and other places too in, in Scripture, um, where that's discussed or hinted at. And so, what a the, one thing that that amazes me about that whole thing is from the, if you think about that, if I well I'm trying to think about that from the point of view of God, you know. Mm -hmm. The Trinity has to be open to welcoming human nature into into himself, into the Trinity. Wow. Sure. And mm -hmm. that you didn't have to do that. You know, this is yeah. a whole it, it almost you'd almost think like, well, did God have to like alter his nature to no. invite human nature? But it's right. No, and I know you're a professor of theology uh, uh, clearly. So is there something you'd like to say, more that you'd like to say about that? Well, you know, obviously, humanity has been, the human nature has been welcomed in because Christ is both uh, divine and human. But um, there's, you know, this was something that was always going to occur. Mm -hmm. um, there's really, there's, there is no change in God. You know, mm -hmm. Obvious things occur to Jesus that didn't happen to the other two because they, um, they aren't uh, incarnate. But it's a, it's an interesting way of looking at it when you think of gee how did how did that you know it was planned from all eternity you know so it finally occurred I mean you know when you think of it 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 was only two thousand years ago a little over two thousand years ago and there were millions and millions and millions of years before that that the universe existed and all that time God knew it was going to happen <laughs> you know. So yeah. it's it's amazing. He already knew every thought we'd have and every thought people will have for as long as, as there are humans living. 
So, you know, people just don't, it's the immensity of God, you know, that impresses me. I mean, well, God obviously impresses me. But I mean, when I think of the immensity, it's like, you know, to, he, he has all of time. He created time. He created space, you know, so we yeah. stop little things like, you know, what happened? I don't know. But, but it's certainly, you know, what happened when, uh, when human nature was taken up, but it was planned from all eternity, even before there were people. <laughs> you know? Yes, he had to be, he had to be open to new life. Just yep. like families need to be open to new life. Um, yeah, yeah. And so that's a, a beautiful thing. And um, mm -hmm. the, you know, when I lived in Montana, I I was amazed at the night sky, how oh. clear it is, and yep. how many stars I could see. And mm -hmm. so I bought a telescope. But you mm -hmm. talk about the vastness and the immensity of God and and the universe existing mm -hmm. so long ago, and um, the. I, I learned there was a, an article, you know, well, so you have a telescope. Now what? <laughs> and so I said, that was my question. Well, now what? And so um, I, I got a notebook and started taking notes on what I was observing. I found the ecliptic and I found the moons of, of uh, Jupiter, which was like the, one of the big things. And I looked at the moon through the telescope. Oh, my goodness. And, um, I, you know, I think I found Mars and some other planets and the beautiful stars. I had a favorite star in Orion, uh, Rigel. I just liked how it twinkled, and I learned quite a bit. And then I began to understand which stars were how many light years away. Yep. And how they were at different distances from where I was observing them. And, mm -hmm. and that there wasn't any way I could picture, I was somehow thinking of my viewpoint as stable. <laughs> <laughs> it's like representing some reality that was um, architecturally sound somehow, firm, firmament that I could navigate. And not that you couldn't navigate it, but I was imagining that I was seeing things as they were at that moment. And that's not true. I was seeing things how they were, you know, light in the dark. Exactly. Yeah. So what you see is not just space. You see time. Yes. And yep. that is the vastness that kind of uh, honestly freaked me out a little bit. I, I like the stars and everything now, but I didn't, I couldn't really get get uh, comfortable with with looking at stars like that. And after a while, just because it was so disorienting to me, mm -hmm. that vastness. It's hard. You can't like you're right. You can't comprehend it, and yet it's fascinating. Yeah. Think about the vastness of yeah, of yeah. Sometimes we can know too much. You're probably having a good time before before you figure out the time thing. <laughs> yeah, you, you, yeah. Can, you, can, you can me exactly. You read me exactly. Yeah, yeah that's exactly what happened. Like, yeah. I still like rainbows. I do write about the rainbow and Noah in the book and talk about how each rainbow is a little different depending on where you stand. You know, but it's mm -hmm. have your own perspective, and to me, that's symbolic of how God values each of our perspectives, and yet. Mm -hmm still communicate to people as a whole like he does with the rainbow and mm -hmm. so little insights like that 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 i found fascinating that i also put in the book yeah yeah it's uh you know it's really when you we're trying to it's honestly it's like a flea trying to un, you know i'm looking at my cat that's why i said a flea oh. like, you know, something small like a flea you know that has almost no brain power all instinct yeah. And, you know, it's like walking over to the Bible and trying to interpret it, you know, because even though we're smart and we're persons, you know, we're actually the lowest level of persons. So, um, you yeah, know. I mean, yeah. sinners all we there's the fall. And um, one of my one of one of my big points in the book is 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 how grateful I am, you know, for the redemption. Mm hmm. Time because that's why I started with the fall. Well, also because it was first in the Bible after creation yeah. happened there and everything. And um, but it's it's such an act of mercy to be be welcomed, you know, back yeah. back to the to mm -hmm. God. But yeah, yeah, we who hasn't experienced sin in their life, right? No one, oh, of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. it's uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. When I was saying um, that we're at the lowest level of person, not in a derogatory sense, but, you know, I mean, angels. Oh, I see. Yes. Yeah. Right. And of course, angels are persons, 
and accordingly, so that the fall, the fallen angels, and um, you know, God. So it's like, you know, we're and yet, so there's this vast universe or universes. I know I've heard theories that there's more than one. Um, <clears throat> and here we are, the equivalent of a cat's flea, and God is willing to take on our nature and die for us. It's it's amazing, you know. It, it is indeed, and and like you said, God knowing every uh, every one of our thoughts before. I think it's like Jeremiah it talks about that mm -hmm. and, and before we even think them, and so mm -hmm. you know, willing to be so not only just human and die for us and, and redeem mm -hmm. us in, in His world, and but also mm -hmm. um, in our in my, our daily life in my daily life. Yeah, I pray to Him about my problems at work and my my mm -hmm. my joys you know when something goes well and mm -hmm. have a sense that he's uh you know our mediator advocating for, for us before the father and and also just mm -hmm. just fun, you know fun fun person to know i mean just mm -hmm. I, I think prayer can be fun just a fun conversation right with with god mm -hmm. different ways people pray different ways i pray but yeah to be able to actually talk to god become man that he wants wants that kind of friendship with us. It is. It's oh, you know, Jesus laughed, so there we go. he was human. He had the human nature. He wasn't yeah. human. He had human nature. So um, I always have to be careful when I say that because I just recently someone said that Jesus was a human person and it's like, no, he's a divine person with, with divine and human natures. But um, so... I think, uh, you know, he laughed. I mean, we know he cried, so why wouldn't he have the opposite happy emotion? So, you know, maybe he's enjoying the conversation, too. <laughs> <You> <laughs> yes, know? yes, yes. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think what I like about the things you're saying about that memoir is it makes God, um, I mean, God obviously is very intimate to us. If he just decided to walk off, we'd all just, you know, uh, disappear I guess I don't know mm -hmm. um, but um, it makes it makes him more of our everyday occurrence you know I mean obviously we know that he is mm -hmm. but we don't normally think of it that way when you're thinking but in a creative uh, endeavor like this you can you can really become more aware of that mm -hmm. you know so mm -hmm. yes. I, yeah yeah I became aware of that. Um, I mean, I knew it intellectually, but there's a, re you know, there's different kinds of intellect. You know, you can know something through your brain or you can know something through your heart. And, you know, my husband died and um, it enabled me. I'm not that I'm, I'm not happy he's dead. That sounds awful, but it enabled me to go to mass every day oh. because, you know, I, I would hang around the house unless I had to run to the grocery store or something because he was getting pretty bad. And, you know, when I started becoming a daily communicant, I noticed that every time I took the communion, uh, the bread, I could feel like a lightness in my heart. And, I mean, you know, it's like, that's, you know, it was like I was just getting an extra shot of life or something. You know, it's, it was, I don't even know how to describe it, except that it feels like joy. Oh, that's so wonderful. Yes. I yeah. mean, yeah. The way and, you give yourself to us. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, he is, he's here holding everything in place all over the place. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you think of that, the immense, that's what is so impressive to me, the immensity. I mean, he's holding us together, all of our little cells so that we remain and, you know, he's probably doing, you know, something with a planet, you know, 50,000 light years away. It, mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yes. One of the things um, I, I do mention in the book is that, you know, I, it's about the creation of the universe and subatomic particles, the very small things, the very large yeah. things. And that, mm -hmm. uh, he, uh, God says in this in this book, uh, it, uh, we, you know, we love it when you're interested in science. Um, yeah. And when you discover when you discover new new subatomic particles, although we already knew they were there, 
And, you know, it's just kind of fun to imagine how God might think about that because yes, every detail, every detail of our, of our heart and of our mind. I, um, when I go to uh, daily mass at the cathedral in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. I have to take a couple of buses. And so, um, well, yes, a bus there and a bus back. And um, if, if the other bus is there, sometimes two buses back, if I don't want to walk those last three blocks. But mm -hmm. one of the things about me and I've been appreciating lately is the sense of community. Mm -hmm. All, you know, Jesus gives himself to all, all of the people there. Yep. And from his point of view, he's in all of us. Mm -hmm. And for him, we're, we're in communion with each other at that moment. Yep. Of yeah. And then I take, then I walk outside. I walk two blocks to where I catch the bus. And then I, I get on the bus and I feel like I'm with people again, right? In a little different yeah. way. A little different mm -hmm. way. But mm -hmm. still, I, you know, they're all people that God loves and Jesus died for. And it's, mm -hmm. it, in some ways, it's a, it's a good way to come home from some daily mass. Um, yeah. Experiencing a sense of uh, community. Uh, in a slightly different way, but nonetheless, these are my these are my mm -hmm. on the bus, right? We're all going somewhere. So. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. These are the things we should be teaching our children. Yeah, many people and many people do. Thank goodness they they uh, go to the, to uh, daily communion. I I wish I find you know I wish my parents had had this this type of joy. Um, mm -hmm. But I think we can still pray for, you know, pray for those who've gone before. And oh, of I, course. I feel like I don't know, I don't know what, uh, you know, what they might have experienced really near or at the end, end of their lives. Because God can, can show up in, in ways that, for that, that person that I might, I would not be aware of necessarily. So yeah. um, I know my grandmother wrote about Moses in a poem. I have some of her uh, writings. She passed away when I was about 10. Mm -hmm. But he was interested in how Moses's face shone when mm -hmm. he came out from the mountain. So she was clearly, this my mother's mother, clearly uh, versed in Christian writings. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember her going to church, but my family did have a uh, quite an appreciation for biology and for the plants, and especially for flowers, and especially for wildflowers. Mm -hmm. So my grandmother had a beautiful wildflower garden, and uh, her husband, my grandfather, I never met, but he was a forestry professor. And uh, commissioner for the state of Michigan, and um, so they had a, a deep knowledge and appreciation for creation. So I know that people can come to God through creation and recognize the Creator. So hopefully mm -hmm. we, found, we found Him, and uh, mm -hmm. that's what I pray for sometimes, you know. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's um, yeah. When you think back through the generations that you knew, I mean, I I never, I knew one grant. No, that's not true. I knew both of my grandfathers. My oh. grandmother died when I was two on my mother's side. And the other grandmother, um, I just never met. I don't know why. But um, but my two grandfathers, I did. And I, it was just interesting to, to look at these people knowing that if, you know, even though I was young, I had that thought. If these people hadn't lived, I wouldn't have lived. Mm. You know? But yeah. uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's always nice when you can go back. I think that's one of the the draws, you know, with the popularity now with genealogy. Mm. People like to see where they've come from, mm -hmm. you know? and uh, and that's uh, that. I mean, that's tied to the idea of of writing a memoir too. I mean, people mm -hmm. hear about you know movie stars writing their memoirs and other, <laughs> other famous people, politicians, and so forth. Yeah. And those have some of those have general interest just because if they were pop artists or or mm -hmm. you know active in the public eye in any way in politics or whatever, yeah. uh, then of course we can see kind of the inside story of yeah. that that situation, whatever it was that they went through Watergate or what. Of course, they yeah. books yeah. about events, but still, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. like Forrest Gump, the appeal of Forrest Gump, yeah, the memoir in a way. He's re he's reliving some of the major incidents in history. And sort of re-explaining them or recasting some of them uh, in his own in his own perspective, and um, yeah. yeah, that's not unlike memoir. It, it is the memory. The memory is important. It can get in the way sometimes a little bit, or have to be dealt with if there was a rough patch. And 
need to sort of resolve feelings or be able to face what what happened and and pray about it and you know come to a sense of peace about something that maybe isn't wasn't a peaceful experience um and yet the process of doing that i think we, we do that when we get older don't we we don't really think about writing a memoir when we're young or, no, that's, true. that's mm -hmm. true yeah i just wrote mine a few years ago <clears throat> but um you know again we all know um even when we look at, at people from the past we know that they probably had the same kind of problems we had. I mean, obviously not with the technology, but, um, mm -hmm. but you know, the same kind of uh, issues. And, um, you know, it's, it's human, it's fallen human nature. It's not human nature. It's fallen human nature. And, yes. Uh, and there's something comforting about that for me, honestly. Yeah. There have been times when I, I felt uh, badly about myself and it's like, why, why is this person even allowed to just keep going? You know, it's depressing, depressing, depressing moments. And I would just say, if anybody's having listening to what's having a you know depressed, depressing moment, the, the, the there are two things that help me. Well, I, I can say three things that help me. One is that um, uh, just what you said. You know, I in this moment think I'm the worst person in the world, and yet everybody has gone through these things. Yeah. And, we aren't so different after all if we read each other's life stories and things like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and so, and the other thing is, it it is, I found it's temporary many times, really. Every, oh, every, yeah. Every yeah. time, because I'm sitting here talking to you, it's in a pretty good state, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, working through these things, it's, it, it is possible to get through them. And my mm -hmm. other little humorous story is one time I was having a very low night. And um, I ended up calling uh, this one author, actually, who had left her number in a particular book um, that was, uh, this book was helping me through my particular issue. And, and she, she wasn't a therapist, but she was a Christian author. And I called her up at like one in the morning. I said, I'm having this terrible pro you know, problem. I feel so horrible. Can you just talk to me for a minute? She did. She talked to me for about an hour. But one of the things she recommended was just have something to do the next day that will get you through the night. They have something to look forward to. So for me, it was, I had checked out library books. And mm -hmm. I thought, you know what? I don't want, um, I wouldn't, I, I have to return those library books. I wouldn't want it written on my tombstone. Here lies Christina, who never did return her library books. Somehow that was really important to me. I had to make it through the night somehow, even though I was so sad, so despondent. And mm -hmm. uh, so now those little tricks, you know, I have to go to the grocery store. I have to do something. So yeah. once having a low moment, yeah, it's fallen human nature. And it's it's not how we're meant to live. You know, no. it's, it's a tough time, but you, you, you're in that dip. And you can get through it. It's temporary and find something to do tomorrow that you have to do with it. No yeah. matter really, you know, just to get you through, the, get through that temporary mm -hmm. time. Oh, I agree. I agree. Yeah, with me, I've always had cats. Oh, so if I don't have if I don't get up in the morning and feed them, they'll eat me. <laughs> ah, there you go. There you go. You got to feed the cats. Yeah, yeah, that's right. They're they're nowhere near as domesticated as dogs. Oh, they are what much wilder. Of course, dogs in a pack is one thing, but cats don't don't travel in packs. Dogs in a pack are are pretty bad, but an individual cat can do a lot of damage. Mm. You know, because they're quick and they're sharp. They're okay. all all claws, all teeth. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I guess that's right, isn't it? That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. And, and they yet they're seem... gentle animals if you treat them right. Okay. They do seem independent, I was going to say. They do seem like they'll, you know, mm -hmm. if you call a cat, won't it stay there for a while before it decides to come to you? Or <laughs> It'll probably turn away. <laughs> but you know the thing is that i think that as they get used to you um they're more apt i mean they're not going to run when you call but um you know they seem appreciative when you put down the cat food and the catnip and all that stuff and you know so they're they're social at a level okay okay yeah. but yeah. not like a dog yeah so, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I have neither a cat nor a dog. I have had both, and uh, it's a lot of work taking care of an animal. But yeah. it, it, the company is really nice. I remember having a rough day one time. I lived in Chicago. I 
I came home and I put my head down on the table. I had a cat named Jonathan. He came and he sat right on my neck like this and mm -hmm. he purred. He, yeah. I was, something was up, you know, I just did, was, I was just sitting there. I just needed a moment. And, um, and, but that, that really, I still remember that. That was years ago and it was so comforting just to have, <laughs> have another being, you know, yeah. notice me and care. Yeah. On me, it was really a blessing. Really yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. That's the way this girl is. She's <laughs> a, she's a riot. My husband had picked her out because <clears throat> our oh, I did a terrible thing. I got up one night in the middle of the night and stepped on our yellow cat's head. Didn't see her. Oh, killed her. Oh, and I mean, I felt terrible, but I also knew one hundred percent it was an accident. Yeah, you know. Um, so, uh, we did bury her and he was still in good enough shape to do that. So we went up to the Chittenden animal place and I looked at that cat and I said, you gotta be kidding. It's the one he wanted. And he's on a cane and he actually ran towards the cat's cage oh, with oh, him because wow. he was, someone else would see her. Mm, so, oh um, so he picked her and I'm like, gee, you know, Bill, I don't know. That cat's awful big. I mean, because, I, I mean, she was huge, and I'm thinking that cat could really hurt you, you know? Mm. So we got her home. I picked her up. She weighed nine pounds. It was all fur. <laughs> wow, that is pretty big for a cat. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, all fur. She fluffs huh. out. You know, she looks like a cloud. But, oh. you know, I, in some way, I wonder, because my husband was getting old, and he was getting sick, and I think, you know, he was thinking, well, she'll have company. Oh. And uh, so, oh. yeah, Pat and I are pretty inseparable when I'm home. And Although the, I, <laughs> I don't know how long it would last if I didn't feed her every five minutes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, it sounds like a great, a great relationship and a wonderful cat family, friend, yeah. you know, relationship, part of your family, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's comforting, isn't it, to, to also think about um, people who have gone before. I, you know, I, I've, I've lost my sister. I mentioned my parents. But the possibility that we'll, you know, they're, they're, they may be in heaven, right? The possibility that we'll be in heaven. And the possibility for ourselves, too, that we uh, we can pass from this life into God's loving, you know, arms and his embrace. And, and um, as I say, finally see him face to face and really be... Uh, embraced by by god and by the saints and these catholics do believe in the you know the mystical body the communion of saints and um so you know i'm sorry for your loss for your husband do you feel like um you know hopeful about see seeing him again in heaven or yeah well, I, I actually lost two husbands i married mm -hmm. uh and had a family with uh my first husband jimmy tulin which is why part of my last name is tulin oh and uh, he died of cancer in 2006. Mm -hmm. And he and I camped up here in Vermont. Mm -hmm. And second husband, of course not at that time, he was married to Bertha, and those two people ran the campground. Oh. Yeah, so Bertha died first. She got cancer, too. And then, Bill, uh, then Jimmy died. And so... Um, you know, Bill and I had been friends for years. The whole, the four of us were friends. So mm -hmm. I just called him up one night and said, you know, do you want to go to dinner? I mean, I wasn't thinking of dating or anything. It was like just some companionship. We'll eat, you know. Mm -hmm. We ended up falling madly in love and married, and and mm -hmm. we were married for almost eighteen years when he died. Wow! But both of them, I I held both of them when they died. Jimmy bled to death from esophageal cancer, and. You know, I was with uh, with Bill, who who had an easier death. He died in about five seconds. Mm. But um, but yeah, it's um, those bonds don't go away. Mm. Oh, even if you remarry, the mm. bond of the first husband is still there, even though, as we know in in Catholicism, you're no longer married. Mm -hmm. But the bond of that marital friendship. Mm. You know the the friendship that you you grow between two people over decades, and it's it's still there with with Bill. Um, they don't go away. You mm. know the 
ones don't go away. So I hope uh, to see them when I get out of purgatory. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, I need, I need your prayers definitely. So, uh, but that's another, another aspect of just be, being, being involved in, in, uh, thank you for sharing those stories. Honestly, it's, it's very touching and uh, meaningful. Um, mm -hmm. But it's another aspect of being involved with this writing, you know, writing this book and thinking from the perspective of God is um, in one place I, he, I, he says, you know, that he, he, uh, he's not bored because there are so many people to love. And since creation, there are so many more people to love and he has infinite knowledge. Yes. But um, the, the capacity for love too is infinite. And he, he has so much more love to give uh, based on our capacity to receive it. And, uh, you know, our capacity can always grow and his love can always grow. So there's just no end to how, how much we can get to know him. Um, you know, other than that, we need to fall, I need, we need to fall asleep once in a while and, you know, yeah. like this, but he's still there walking over us. So it's, uh, it's, it's really great to, to have had an opportunity to, to write this, um, and just, be in a, a sort of a conversation with God during the process of writing. And hopefully some, some things came out on the page that were, you know, that were um, meaningful. I think I, I looked at it again, just before this interview, just to remind myself of everything that was in it. It's a short read. It doesn't take people very long to read it. And the, the major message I think I ha ended up having was um, God wants you, you with him, you know, he wants us with him. And mm -hmm. for, for always in heaven and it's an invitation to see through his stories and through his how he might look at it in a friendly way in a conversational style what he was thinking at the time he talked to abraham or what how he you know views mary and joseph and the marriage of ruth and boaz and some of the other biblical characters and um get to know these stories uh mm -hmm. maybe from from the mind of god a little bit or to start to think like that and have your own prayer conversation with them to just to just see but um yeah that was the major sense i got as i wrote it was just god's wish to have everybody you mm -hmm. know allow him to embrace them and his love and mercy mm -hmm. yeah i agree um there's no question of that i mean we are um pretty high up on the scale of creation i mean visible creation we're the top but uh, uh angels of course have um much more power and whatnot than we do and ability but um you know and and the good thing uh you know an angel chooses bad they, they can't turn it back around mm. but we can make mistakes because we're not as smart as them and be forgiven it, it's true we're not and uh so because we sin you know, I mean, think of the mercy of God that, you know, because he knows that we're not as smart as angels. In fact, we're really not all that smart, <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, we do stupid things and yeah. we sin and um, or we have a, a problem like anger, something like that. And yeah. and God gives us a chance, you know, to fix it. You know, you go to confession, you try to you, at least you're trying to do the right thing. Yeah. So it, it's, um, I mean, really, I think confession, all the sacraments, but especially confession, show how much he loves us. Because he doesn't, he hates evil. I don't know if hate's the right word. He hates evil. He hates evil do, deeds. But he's given us a way to be forgiven for those. And I mean, there's, there's just, you know, that's, that's truly a, par a parental love. Oh my goodness. Oh yes. And yes. Mm -hmm. What a difference. What a difference being forgiven for something and, and being having access to confession. Yeah. Especially we're talking about remembering, remembering our, our lives and remembering our own sins. And it's like, oh my goodness, I need to get the confession like right now. Where, where is the church that's open? You know what I mean? I, uh, I and, and they, they're, it's not hard to find. I mean, it's fairly easy to get to get to confession fairly quickly. And what a relief when uh, I, we receive absolution from the priest and all our sins are forgiven and we start over. What a blessing, what mercy, really. It's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, I agree with you. Yeah, nothing, nothing I don't agree with there. That's absolutely so important for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
It is. And yeah, yeah most don't mm -hmm. take advantage of it. Well, that's true. Some some don't, and um, a lot uh, don't. I don't understand that. I, I I guess they just are embarrassed, or you know, they don't want to admit to things they've done, or maybe you know, maybe they went to a priest who yelled at them or something. Who knows? Yeah, but a lot of people. Oh, I know. I suppose there's reasons. Um, you know, I'm just thinking out loud that um, I know it's it's. it's we're supposed to be in a state of grace before we receive communion. Mm -hmm. So it's it's you know I do I do see lines of people uh, you know waiting for confession outside the confessional as I walk into um, uh, you know an evening mass for example, and mm -hmm. uh, that's heartening. Uh, it helps yeah. if if one can get up the courage to go, and then if you show up and there are other people waiting there, that's kind of encouraging because it's like okay, yeah. I'm not the only one here and. Um, yeah. Well, I think most most of the priests are pretty understanding. If I can't find exactly the right words, they sort of get it what I'm talking about. It's they, mm -hmm. you know, and they think of some of these saints like Padre Pio and uh, um, John Vianney. Vianney, never know how to pronounce that. Yeah. How they yeah. spent so many hours in the in the confessional, and how much they, they must have just heard all sorts of different different things from all sorts of different people, and found some something helpful to say, something helpful to do to help. Yeah. That so many people wanted to come to them to get 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 their sins absolved, be able to get it off their chest, be able to talk yeah. it through. Yeah, mm -hmm. oh. yeah. Well, that's about um, really it for for this for this book. It's always such a pleasure talking to you. But um, honestly, I it's a it's a short read. It's um, I, it holds up again. God's memoir again. Many thanks to Andre Gilton Media for uh, publishing this. God's memoir, Christina Olson, and um, yeah, I hope people enjoy it and just enjoy sitting back and pondering themselves how God might think about whatever their day is like. This is just kind of one little window into into that world, and that's, yeah, I do hope people enjoy reading it. Oh, I think they will. I think it's it's a very creative idea, and uh, you know, just the the few things you've told me about. I mean, that's like that's those they're great. You know? <laughs> So I've got to read it too now. <laughs> well, I hope so. I hope you enjoy it, and it's fun. It's it, it was a fun way to write and to think, and mm -hmm. uh, I do. I I, do, I appreciate the opportunity to talk about it and share more about it. I really do. Yeah. Well, I I love doing this. I love hearing about books, and you know that also determines what I'm actually going to read. You know, so it's it's, uh, a great, it's a great to have this show i mean uh it, it's wonderful to hear about different authors perspectives and um how, like you you always ask you know how how, how the person got started how did they get the idea and yep. it's all fascinating to hear it really is yeah well as i yeah i've had i've had well over 250 interviews i'd like to keep doing it till i die oh i'm sure no it's a it's a great gift and uh, not everyone can can make people feel as comfortable as you make make me feel. I'm sure, and also your other interview, uh, other interviewees, I guess would be the word. That you have a real gift for it. Yeah, I've only had a couple that that didn't go well, and um, you know where. I, and I think what was wrong was that they had this idea of like I was going to have a list of questions. Oh. You know, and I never do that because I want it to be a conversation. Hmm, okay, yeah, nice. Always something I can think up if I have to, but it's like you know, there's been there's been a few that have been not good. I mean, not uh, hostile or anything, but just not good interviews. Okay, so. yeah, and sometimes the material can be, um, you know, of interest to one person but not to another so much, and that can be a little bit challenging too, I suppose. But uh, it's mm -hmm. it is you know people who who do make it to the end of writing a book as you have and and it's it takes a certain amount of discipline and a certain amount of willingness to put yourself out there a little bit and uh so it's great to have an opportunity to hear hear from people who have done that and see what they have to say mm -hmm. i should write them <laughs> i should write a memoir on the radio show oh yes oh my goodness wow <laughs> It's an interesting people. Yeah, that would be fascinating. Yeah, that would be very short. <laughs> oh, <laughs> not because I can't go through all two hundred and fifty of them. <laughs> oh, still, but just building like up, 
live or of of uh, interviews. So if people are interested, they can always go to WCAT Radio. My shows there, all the shows are there, and they're all taped. So he's got, he, Sebastian has done a real uh, a real service to the Catholic world. Mm -hmm. Not only with the publishing and the uh, the radio shows, um, but uh, the work that he does, usually pro bono to help people, mm. is it's really impressive. Yes, so, mm -hmm. I, I definitely appreciate his his friendship and his support and his uh, uh, guidance. Also, um, we we met at Holy Apostles. College mm -hmm. of Seminary, I think it was probably around 2012 mm -hmm. when I first started teaching there. And, uh, you know, it was good to get to know him and then work on, on some course design, mm -hmm. including one on, on social media. So the, what we're doing here, um, you know, it's been a, a big part of, of his his background and mine as well as a yeah. communications uh, engineer. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, it's, uh it, it's it's kind of cool to be on you know on on the media on media now that we, we mm -hmm. have such a so we can be producers not just consumers of media now that we have the internet and the means of communication that we're using right here today uh, yeah and so forth it's really opens up the world to a lot more possibilities it does you're right yeah a lot of people are very hesitant about technology but you know anything can be abused um you know or misused i mean i always use the example of you know a cutting you know you cutting instrument you can cut a steak you can cut a vegetable you can cut a person yeah you know like it's the same thing with the technology there's actually i i used to teach well actually i'm teaching sociology of religion again this fall mm -hmm. and when you look at sociology of religion there was a, a big section on um media you know, because now you have so many of these uh, mega churches that broadcast, and uh, it's it's interesting when you see, you know, the the impact um, that it has had, and you know, I you know, so usually the argument is people will stay home so that they don't have to go out to church, but mm -hmm. the other, but there's a whole slew of people that can't get out of the house that can now go to go to church. Mm -hmm. so, really very interesting the pandemic taught us that i think and uh, i especially like the massonline.org website during the pandemic because i could then virtually uh, visit masses all over the world yeah mm -hmm. you know and if i'm up in the middle of the night in fact sometimes i still do look it up if i just want to just mm -hmm. be inspired and it's a, you know two thirty in the morning or something and maybe somebody in malaysia maybe there's a mass there that i can watch and it's a it's a blessing to have that that opportunity but yes it can be used for good or ill mm -hmm. yeah it's a problem all technology can be mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and that's what people need to realize they isolate out the uh the media and um you know it's it's all technology Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. anyway, well, okie doke, this was a good interview, and, uh, you know, whenever you write something, let me know. Oh, thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. It's been great uh, talking with you, as always. Yeah, I, I enjoy you, too. Okay. <laughs> okay. Would you like to close us with a prayer? Sure. In the name <laughs> of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, thank you so much for giving us a window into your personality and your writings and the word that you spoke in your son. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to appreciate you more and talk to you as best we can uh, and about you as best we can and the opportunity to share with others, our listeners and viewers who also want to get to know you better. We appreciate this time together and uh, ask for blessings on all of our all of our listeners and on ourselves and our own lives too. In Jesus' name we pray, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Have a good night. You too. Thank you, Cynthia. Yep. Thank you later. Bye-bye. Yep.